Hey, fifth graders, we're going to be looking at um, a few, that is three, three graphs that have information about um, social studies. These will be colonial graphs about the early colonies. And just wanted to kind of go through and show you how to read these graphs and how to interpret them so that when you get asked a question, you know what to look for and how to look for it. So let's go ahead and begin. Okay, we're going to start with a fairly simple graph. And some of the things that you should be looking for in the graph and taking note of before you answer any questions is the title. And here the title of the graph tells you that this is showing the enslaved population of the North and the South. So um, you can see that has a title. That top part is um, the title of the graph. And then you can have a couple of different areas that you need to take note of. One is the left side here. It tells you this is the population. And you can see it goes from 0 to 300,000. And, and one thing to, important to take note of is the increments or um, the skip counting. How much, are they, how much is each line worth? So we're going from 50,000 to 100,000 to 150,000. So we can tell that we are, um, we are counting by 50,000s. Okay, every um, line represents 50,000 increase all the way up to 300,000. So that's important for a couple of reasons. One is because it tells us what the numbers mean and why they're there. Uh, two, from zero to 50,000, um, we know that there is a space in between 50,000 uh, and zero right there, and then in between there, and all these in-betweens it's good to know because sometimes on a bar graph like this, uh, which is called the bar graph because of the literal bars that are coming up from the bottom, um, that there are numbers in between there. Uh, so you have to kind of have that number sense to know that there is a number between 0 and 50,000, right? And that would be 25,000. And then between all the other ones, um, so between 250,000 and 300,000, you would have 275,000. Um, and that's, it's, oops, that was supposed to be an eraser. That's important because you need to know that, um, you need to know that there are, sometimes when a bar graph, here's a good example now, see how straight of a line I can draw. Um, for example, this line is not exactly lined up with, um, well, actually, it's even lower than that, isn't it? Uh, it's not exactly lined up with the blue line. It's a little bit above it. So then you would have to kind of ask yourself where exactly is that. Um, there, let's erase all this so we can see a little bit better. There we go. So where exactly would that land on my chart of numbers? So... The 200,000, let me highlight that one, it's too red. So the 200,000 here, this line, oops, this line right here. The orange is just a bit above it, but not quite at the halfway point, right? Not quite halfway, which would make it uh, 200 and 225,000. So it's between 200,000 and 225,000. So I could say in 1760, these are the years, right? This is a good time to point out the bottom of the uh, graph is the years. And that is, um, it looks like maybe 210,000, right? That's another thing with the, with the bar graph. It doesn't have to be precise. We're not looking for precise numbers. We're trying to get as close as we can, um, to what it's what the representation is and here it's a little bit more than 200,000 so I would say a reasonable estimate would probably be 210,000 um, because it's not even close to the middle which would be 225,000 so maybe even 205,000 could also be a good estimate okay so let's look at um, the bottom now so we looked at the side and what those numbers mean let's look at the bottom and find out what these numbers mean if you have 1670 1700 1730 and 1760 and this is in years so you can see that there is a increment or there is a skip uh, a number skip pattern here too 
from 1670 to 1700 to 1730 to 1760, it's about 30 years. So they're skipping about 30 years every time, right? And then um, below that is the colors, which are actually pretty easy to read. There's um, green is the north and uh, red is the south, or I guess it's orange is the south. So that's all the information that would help us to answer any questions for uh, this type of graph. For example, if I was to ask you um, how many, how much of the population was enslaved in the South in 1730. So I would look for the South and see that that is orange. And I would find 1730, which is here. And I wanted to know how many of the popu how much of the population was enslaved. Well, here I have my line. It kind of goes right about there. So this one looks like it's between fifty thousand and one hundred thousand. So I could say between that would be seventy five thousand. This is a terrible comma, but it is a comma nonetheless. Let's take a rewrite that. Ooh, let's just rewrite the whole number. I would say that's pretty close to 75,000. There, 75,000. Um, because it's it's pretty close in the middle. So that's how you read that. Let's go ahead and go to the next one and look at something a little bit um, different. Okay, so here we have um, a line graph because instead of bars coming up from the bottom, these are lines going across. But we have the same uh, things that we saw in the last one. We have the title, which is the colonial population growth from 1740 to 1780. So that's what this graph is telling us. The population or how many people were in the colonies and how they grew from the year 1740 until 1780. Um, and since it gives me the years, I'm just going to skip to the bottom and highlight these. You can see that the years are down here. Now it doesn't actually say years. But since it shows it in the title, and since we know that they're the same at the bottom, we know that's what they're talking about. So it's a little self-explanatory. Uh, they do put us, uh, the, sorry, they do give us a hint on the side, though, and show that the population is in thousands. In thousands, then it says U.S. Census established, estimated, estimated. Um, but what's important there is that it's in thousands. So this number, uh, 550, if this whole chart is in thousands, then that actually is 550,000. See how that works? So it's actually giving us uh, a bigger value than the numbers there. And a lot of times they do that just to make the graph easier to read. So it starts at 50,000, uh, 100,000, 150,000, all the way up to 550,000. And our increments here are 50s, 50, 100, 150, 200. Easy. And our years, those are, looks like 10 years, 40, 50, 1760, 1770, 1780. Yeah, so this is pretty easy to read. Now, what if I was looking for some information um, and I wanted to, let's, let's try to ask a question. Let's see. Let's go with, erase some of this stuff. There. Mm, what was the population of Massachusetts in 1770? Okay, so we're going to find Massachusetts on our legend. See here, they have all of the colonies with little symbols. I mean, they're different color lines, but then each little line has a symbol in the middle to kind of help read it. Uh, so here's Massachusetts. Right there. And then we look for the year 1770, which we said was right here, at 1770. So I want to know how many... Uh, uh, what was the population growth uh, from Massachusetts in 1770. So since, there, since it kind of gives me this whole area here, I'm just going to go straight up from the center of the number, kind of where the symbols are, because the symbols, if you notice, are kind of lined up with the years. So the symbol I'm looking for is a green line with a triangle, which is right here. And it's not quite, if you take a look at 250,000, it's not quite 250,000. It's a little bit below it. So I'd have to guesstimate um, what's a reasonable answer between 200 and 250,000 uh, when it's not quite in the middle. Right the middle of 200 and 250,000 would be 225,000, but it's not quite in the middle. It's a little bit higher. So I might say that the population would, could be 240,000.
that's a reasonable estimate. So it's, it's all about following the lines and then making guesstimates if it's not uh, exactly on the line. Uh, let's take um, let's take the same the same colony of Massachusetts and let's go to 1760. So we go down 10 years right here to 1760 and we find the green line with the triangle which is right here and this one is actually right on the line. So I can say that in 1760 Massachusetts had 200,000 people. So then if the question was asking me how much did the population grow from 1760 to 1770 in Massachusetts, I could say it went from 200,000 to 240,000, which would mean the answer to the question would be that the population of Massachusetts grew about 40,000, I'm sorry, yeah, about 40,000 people from 1760 to 1770. All right, let's do one more. Okay, so this is our uh, final graph, and we can see that it has a title just like the other ones did. The population in the 13, or the population growth in the 13 colonies. Pretty similar to the one we looked at, except this one shows the three regions. Remember, the three regions of the uh, 13 colonies were the New England, Middle, and Southern colonies. So it's given us those. No, no fancy colors here, but it does give us three types of lines. New England has the kind of straight line. Middle colonies have the little dashes, like a dotted line kind of. And southern colonies have a line and a dot and a line and a dot. Kind of looks like Morse code, right? Uh, so on the left-hand side, we have the population in thousands. So that is 100, but it's, all, it's 100,000. It's just written with the number 100, but the, the lead or the label on the side of the left is telling us that the population is in thousands, so it's actually 100,000. And on the bottom we have the year. Uh, if we go back to the left we can see that the population is broken up into skip counting hundreds. So 100, 200, 300, 400. So it's 100,000 between each of those lines. And for the bottom where the years are, the increments or the skipping here looks like 17... I'm sorry, 1680, 1700, 1720, 40, 60. It's 20 years. It's about 20 years for each line. And I, and I will just follow the same things that I was doing earlier to, to answer this question. Um, so let's, let's ask one, and then we, we can see if we can figure it out. Let's go with red. So we're going to say um, which colony had mm, 300,000 people in 1730. Okay, so we're looking for 1730, and we're looking for the colony that has about 300,000 people. About, about 300,000 people. Well, first I would look for 1730, and since um, I don't have 1730 listed here, I would have to use kind of those number skills to know that between 20 and 40 that this actually would be here 1730 all right that'd be pretty close to the middle then i'll just draw that all the way up and i can see that the colony that has closer to 300,000 which is this line right here it looks like it's the the line dot line dot which is the southern colonies so i would say that the southern colonies had about 300,000 people in the year 1730. And then some of the other things I can kind of just, by looking at the graph, kind of understand is that, hmm, I see that the, let me erase some of this, I can see that the middle colonies, right here, the ones with the dot, dot with the dots on it, looks like they stayed low, like they stayed, their population stayed the lowest through this whole uh De, you know, these whole decades of 1680 to 1760, uh, it looks like the middle colonies stayed low, and it looks like the New England colonies went higher a little bit, but the, you can see the southern colonies really shot up, like right after, I don't know, right after right at 1730, that the uh, southern colonies, the ones that have the dot, dash, dot, like their dot, dash, looks like they just skyrocketed upward. So that's telling me something happened to increase the population of the southern colonies 
way more than middle and New England colonies. And I guess we'll have to wait until we get to the next unit to figure that out. But um, that's it. That's map reading. I'm sorry, <laughs> graph reading in social studies. So hopefully when you see this on the quiz, you'll understand a little bit more how to read this. Thanks. Bye-bye.